All right, all right, all right. We are officially in another video, and it's been a long week without you guys and girls, maybe eight, nine days, ten days now. I'll get into the hecticness. Uh, it's been a learning experience and just a hard experience, but uh, whatever. It's uh, another day, and the sun's going down, and it's time to train legs. So I have gotten in, since I've seen you all last, I've gotten in half-assed workouts. And they've been sporadic and untimed, and I kind of lost track of my consistency just because a lot of consistency around me was really affected. So just happens, and I gotta say, I'm very uh, inspired by those who, you know, push through their struggles and continue to achieve their goals. Most notably, John De La Rosa brought the best physique of his whole life after a divorce, starting a new company, and moving away from New York, his home. So, new beginnings coming at the end of the summer. So this summer's just got to be consistency and doing what I can and learning what I can and getting what I can out of it. So, so far, it's been quite a year and it's not going to get any easier, I bet. All right, bet. Let's go do this. Legs. Try to try something new today. I don't necessarily want to do all one-legged stuff, but let's get in there. Alright, what's going on everyone? Just showing you here my warm up after the seven and a half minutes on the bike. Three sets of each, nine warm up sets. It's good. Foie, 36 pounds, last set of one legs. Then we'll do some Bulgarians and I think I'm gonna squat after. Alright, so one of the better leg days I've had in the past couple of weeks. I guess I'll just uh, state it now. I'm kind of uh, figured out how I wanted to say it. Uh, just someone who. Um, i have romantically involved with someone I really care about. Uh, they kind of went through, I'd say, the hardest thing they've ever had to go through in their life. And, you know, as adults, people in our 20s, we've been through some things. Everyone has some very interesting traumas and interesting mistakes and regrets. And to uh, to be with her when she had to go through the hardest thing and currently that she's ever gone through, it's, uh, it's difficult whether you're romantically involved, it's a best friend or a family member, whatever. So it's been difficult. Aside from grieving and then feeling grateful and then feeling like, uh, you know, worried and stuff like that, it's just been an emotional roller coaster. But at the end, I learned something about my own insecurities and my own uh, trauma and my own uh, just mental health issues by observing someone and uh, trying to, you know, keep that team. And when you lose that team you build with someone and something really, really disruptive happens, if you rely on that team too much and it's gone, it's a difficult situation so learning lesson and it was good motivation for this workout finally felt good and finally felt like i was planted and hit a nice little not really a pr but had a great single leg dead, single leg deadlift session and pain free in the knee this day which i'm really grateful for so speaking of being pain free in the knee bulgarian split squats have been fantastic also speaking of bulgarian split squats I just watched Pete Rubish on Instagram split squat 120 pound dumbbells per hand and I basically have about, I don't know, 25 or less than 25 pounds in each hand. I think it was 23 and 24. So pretty crazy and uh, good for me, but uh, it's definitely uh, an exercise that I find difficult to load. But Pete did have a much closer stance. So as I continue to keep these in, slowly phase them out as their importance really is gonna be diminished. I'm gonna close that stance in and see if I can keep increasing the weight. I just don't wanna injure myself trying to do really heavy single leg split squats on a, on a pad. You know, it's very unstable and it's not something that you can really catch yourself. You have to bail out of the exercise a lot. So I don't wanna get hurt trying to get the biggest legs I could ever have doing something one-legged when I'm imbalanced. So introducing a compound movement like the squat is gonna be crucial so that I don't just you know, mess around on Bulgarians. And my knee felt great, definitely felt some weird things on my inner thighs and on like the lateral and medial parts of my knee. But as you relearn to squat and re cue knees out and stuff like that with your hip tightness and lower back tightness, it can definitely be straining on the knees, but it shouldn't be stressful and it really wasn't or painful and it wasn't. So I'm trying to emulate the starting strength uh, barbell squat. You guys have seen me talk about Mark Ripto's book. I haven't got to the overhead press section yet because I really wanted to focus on squats. But as I loosened up and put a little weight on my back, the key I'm going here is thumbs around the bar, arm basically in line with the torso right there, 
See, and I'm staying just about 45 degrees and the barbell is on the spine of my uh, scapula. So it's kind of like really on my rear delts, it's very low. So totally different than the high bar I used to preach. And again, I was doing that high bar because I was sick of people basically doing ultra low bar squats above parallel half squats. So to distinguish from the people who do half squats and are ego lifting and have really no physique and have no interest in anything other than having big numbers and not even really competing, just, just moving big weight to be a part of that community, um, that's annoying. So I just started high bar squatting lighter weight and I have bigger legs than most of those guys. Any, or I guess most people doing those horrible form exercises that I observe. So I just wanted to do something technically difficult that would stimulate my quads and just not hurt my herniated disc in my back. So the high bar squat was a good opportunity for me. It was basically like a front squat. So if you have a herniated disc in your back, if you're having you know lower back issues, a low bar squat is not something you wanna to try to learn to do. You just wanna to try to get better. So I knew how to high bar squat without hurting my back because I could stay vertical. So I high bar squatted. And now that my back is better, I'm gonna reintroduce the hamstring and protect my knee by involving the hamstring more in a low bar squat. So the low bar squat, better for the knees in the long term because you're using the hamstring more, it's more balanced. And the high bar is better if you're recovering an injury like a spine injury or something where staying more upright and lowering the load is gonna benefit you. So herniated disc, wanna maintain my quads. Obviously the high bar was the way to go. Back is feeling much better and now I wanna protect my knee so let me squat in a fashion that uses more hamstring because the more muscles that you can use on a leg when you're using the entire leg, the more stable it's gonna be. Do you wanna push on the leg press with only the front of your thighs and disregard everything behind you? Or do you want something supporting the back of your knee? All these people wear knee sleeves for everything. Well, if you use your hamstring and all the supporting muscles, you'll have a lot more bracing. So thanks for watching guys and I'll be back soon, peace. That's a wrap. Dude at the end of my training session was like, sit calves, bro. He's hitting calves too, but he's got the opposite problem. Good arms, no calves, and vice versa. But I gave him the advice. The advice is. All right, everyone, welcome back. It's good to be back. Let's answer a few questions. So Amanda Paulino says, so all you said means I can still do my leg routine, just lower the weight with a herniated disc. By the way, thank you so much for talking. I was discouraged of working out after I got my MRI and found out I've herniated discs. So Amanda, I definitely uh, suggest that you send me a DM because this is going to be like a very, uh, it's going to be a topic that requires back and forth to get some information. But what I can tell you is that once you herniate a disc in your back, you have to avoid bending over. It's really that simple. If you have a herniation like I did, where it's uh, coming out of the backside, I believe, and it just feels terrible superficially. If that's what you're dealing with, then you want to avoid any type of loading your back when your back is bent. You want to avoid picking up anything off the floor. So what I had to do was squats where you hold, or like a front squat where you hold something, or a goblet squat where you stand up and you hold something between your legs. And that way you get a vertical spine. So a lot of people are using to squat with kind of a low bar position, so you need to relearn how to do like a front squat like this and you're gonna to wanna to start on a hack squat or on a machine. So disc herniation, the key is to brace, keep your core straight and never bend over or have flexion. This is flexion, you don't want that. You always have to be erect, straight up. Even a slight extension is okay, not under load, but you never want flexion. So as soon as you're flexed like this, your back is flexed, you're gonna exacerbate the injury. So it will take months of babying your body that exact way, but you will come back 100%. If you're able, to do your daily tasks and you've been injured, you can come back, it's possible. Nick says, also bro, thank you for all the free information you give us, says a lot about your character, loyal followers since day one, which he is, and yeah, actually, it's funny, the latest book I read was recommended to me by my brother, it's called Leaders Inside and Out. My brother uh, actually took a Navy SEAL uh, led kind of a learning type of program, it's just like a I don't know, if you want to sign up for a bodybuilding camp, you can sign up for a camp led by Navy SEAL. And he did it with this gentleman, Rob Robertson. So I let his book, I read his book on leadership and the difference between leadership, management, you know, working, doing things for yourself. So it was really inspiring and it kind of goes along with what you said, you know, if I want to 
lead or follow or give you guys information, I got to look to other people who are going to give me good information. So I'm just emulating, you know, the good people that I follow that give out free content that know more than I do. So I appreciate you appreciating it. And I feel the same way because that's what I folks with too. Joe Schmo says, he's absolutely right. What movie's that from? So I did his first cycle, it was LGD, fed into the hype of minimal suppression, my ball shut down five weeks, off cycle, gained five pounds. Should have just done an anabolic test cycle. And you're right, because I was talking to this with another buddy of mine through Instagram today, you found results via SARMs, correct? How do you know they were SARMs? Could have been that there D-ball son. But yeah, you got anabolic-like side effects, so TRT's the way to go. Bro, thanks guys for watching. I'll be back soon. Peace. <coughs> oh, I had dinner. Ouch. All right, we can do a little sample here. It's a Boyce Avenue cover. I'm tired, it's late. <laughs> You're a sky, cause in a sky full of stars I'm gonna give you my heart Cause you're a sky, cause you're a sky full of stars Because you light up the path All right, guys, so that's it. The purpose of putting that up is it's not to show off or anything like that. I sounded way better earlier before it was 10.30 at night, and I had, like, I don't know, played, like, five or ten songs earlier. But I'm just, like, happy just playing again and singing. It feels great. So just do what you guys love to do, whether you're great at it or pretty good at it. Like, people will respect you and love you for what you're doing and being who you are. And if they don't, who cares? Like, where you can't all be perfect like everyone else. So... I love not being perfect. I'm just trying to get big as fuck and play some music because creating stuff's fun. That's it.